Make Her Look Younger Part 2. Please read or listen to Make Her Look Younger Part 1 before continuing. Blondie burst through the back door of the flat she shared with her mum. Her life had just changed, just like that, in the space of about an hour. She grabbed a tea towel off the side and wiped her tear-stained face. Mum, she called. Her mum was no longer sitting at the kitchen table, but the £40 was still there. Mum, she called again. She went into the living room and mum was sitting on the sofa, smoking a fag and just sort of staring at the TV. That was not on. Mum, Blondie said loudly. Her mum didn't respond. Her eyes were wise and a little glazed. Blondie had seen this a million times. This meant mum was going to be off the radar for a bit. Her mental health was about to take over for a while. Mum, Blondie said, now with a sob in her voice. Then she thought, what's the point in crying? No one's listening. Mum, I'm going to stay at Stella's for the weekend, all right? Her mum just nodded slowly. Blondie went round and made sure all the doors and windows were locked up. When her mum got like this, anything could happen. She went and checked the gas card. There was enough to last for the weekend. Blondie turned the TV on and put the remote next to her mum. She grabbed a blanket and threw it over her mum's legs. She looked at her mum, who had still not looked at her. Her mum was reliving some traumatic event in her past in her head right now. It's where her mum usually went when things got bad, but that's another story. Blondie went to her room and took some money out of the Nike shoebox under her bed. She changed her clothes and grabbed her naff naff backpack and stuffed it with a change of clothes. See, she then just stood there, looking around her room. It was a state. A mixture of poverty and lost childhood. She felt sad. Sad is the only thing she could think of right now. That and scared. She went and looked at her mum. She had just lit another fag, the butt of the last one still smoking the ashtray. I'll be back soon, mum, she said. No reply. She let herself out the back door, locking it behind her, taking the key. She also had the front door key. It was the only way she could guarantee that mum was not getting out when she was gone. She remembered what the older just said about her mum being crazy. She swore under her breath and started to walk back to the trap house where the olders would be waiting for her. She felt shook. She knew that this was in over her head and that she had to front it. She felt the familiar panic in her chest. She'd been having panic attacks for a few years now and hid it most of the time. None of the boys had ever seen her have one. No way. When she felt it coming, she would just disappear and go home. Her mum called it ghosting. When Blondie would just sort of disappear to a room and not interact with anyone. She had been ghosting since she was about nine. It had gotten worse the past year. She had watched her mum have panic attacks for years and years, but like I said, that's another story. She stopped at the shop by the trap flat and got a drink. The shop owner knew most of the kids in the area. You okay, baby girl? He said, giving her a change from the drink. You don't look so good. She looked at him and for a hot second, she was almost going to tell, ask for help, but she didn't. What could he do? What could anyone do? She stood at the bottom of the block and took a deep breath. She didn't want to go back in, but this was it. This was time to step up. She pushed open the block door and two of the other youngers were sitting on the stairs playing music and chatting. What's good, one said, and the other just nodded. She nodded back and stepped around them and started up the steps. The door at the top of the block was open and she could hear bare people talking, music playing, people laughing. She took another deep breath. She got to the door and walked in. There are always bare heads in this place, but right now, between the time it took her to go home and come back, it looked fuller. That's because Aaron had gone to get the girls, the girlfriends of the elders. These girls were aged between 15 to 19. They were not active within the gang and they'd done stuff with the boys. Blondie did not want to do stuff. She went and stood in the kitchen, not sure what to say. Everyone was busy. Some of the men then were in the kitchen, scowls out, weighing up, cracking her in like crazy. Some had masks over their faces. Suddenly, someone screeched, Blondie! Blondie jumped, and she was suddenly engulfed with someone hugging her and kissing her face. She knew that smell and hug anywhere. It was Nadine. This was her elder's main chick, and Blondie adored her. She wrestled out of the hug like always and yelled the usual, allow it, but there was a smile on her face. Nadine was about 17 and she was beautiful. Well, that's what Blondie thought. She had long brown hair that she wore in a bum with these little curls gelled to the side of her head. 
She was mixed race and had green eyes. She wore these wicked hoop earrings and always looked like she was going raving. When Amanda had first let Blondie hang around with them, it was Nadine that had cleaned Blondie up, sorted her hair and made sure she didn't like a tramp. Blondie loved her but never showed it. Blondie also knew that bad stuff happened to Nadine and that Nadine liked hard food. She liked hard food a lot. Blondie, don't get rude, you know, about allow it, Nadine said with a big smile on her face. You can't stay here now. Come back later. We are getting ready to go country. Nadine said, offering Blondie a fag. Blondie took the fag lid and said, yeah, no. Blondie said, blowing the smoke out in a long puff. Then come back later and we can chill, Nadine said, whilst her eyes looked hungry over the drugs that had been weighed up. It's me. I'm going country, Blondie said. Just like that, looking straight at Nadine to see what reaction would be. Nadine slowly looked up from the weighing scales, looked at Blondie and said, what? And then in a whisper, she said, what did you say? I I'm going country, Blondie said all casually like it didn't matter. Nadine's mouth dropped open slightly. No, no, she said. You're, you're too young. She's too young. She screamed over her shoulder towards the other room. And with that, Nadine was gone, shouting at the old, older blondie guest. She just stood there in the kitchen, listening to Nadine shouting something about, he can't do this, not her, that Nadine would go instead. She heard the older say to her for, to mind her own. Nadine said something about breaking her in, and then there was a clapping sound. A few minutes later, the older appeared in the kitchen with Nadine. Her face was red and blotchy, and it was clear that he just hit her. Behind them was a couple of older girls. The older looked at Blondie, no expression on his face, then he grabbed Nadine by the wrist and flung her in the kitchen. Make her look younger, he said to Nadine, who was now on the floor. Make Blondie look younger, now. And he went back to playing the computer in the other room. <laughs>